Now, I'm a huge Marvel fan, however, there's one prop that I've never tried to make, and that's a Wolverine cowl, which we're gonna be doing in today's video. However, I've already managed to go off and screw this up, not once, not twice, but three times. And this whole project idea spawned from Yosh Studios releasing a new set of three printable Wolverine cowl files that are one large file that you can print on a larger 3D printer, or there are individually separated parts that you can print on some smaller machines like this Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printer, which let's get this out of the way. Elegoo is going to be sponsoring today's video. They are the makers of this new Elegoo Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 3D printers that are budget friendly coming in under $300 and they print incredibly fast. And I'm using their new rapid black PLA for all of these prints. And I have to say they are coming out and looking so clean off of these Neptune 4 3D printers. However, this is where I started to run into a few issues. And now thankfully, I don't think any of the issues that I'm running into are derived from the 3D printers or the files. However, I think they have to do with some of the settings that I was using for these prints. And the first one that I noticed was the back portion of the helmet and the spaghetti nest of supports that ended up breaking free and just not printing properly. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I could have went off and printed these entirely without support at this point for this back portion of the helmet. And very similar to that are the ear pieces. However, one of those printed beautifully, no issues whatsoever. However, on the second one, again, those tree supports or organic supports at a Prusa slicer just refused to print properly and ended up with a little bit of a spaghetti mess there on the ends. This is still looking pretty good with those organic supports. Things are kind of able to magically recover and I believe I can just clean this up and use this print versus having to run off and reprint it all over again. Third issue was easily the worst out of all of them, which is where I ended up with a layer shift in the print and I wasn't entirely sure what the heck happened with this because I had the printers really well dialed in, belts tightened down. So I figured, you know what, let's just stop the print and then run off and try and reprint it, which gives us the opportunity to make sure that I've got everything scaled correctly, which by the way, if you don't already know this tip, you can slice off a very thin section, a cross section of whatever it is that you're trying to print and where, then go off and print that and use that as a test fitting to see if everything's gonna fit properly. And another option you can do is run off and print my cosplay calipers that are free download over on printables. But again, this gives me a good opportunity to see if the map will fit properly and it is a nice snug fit and it's looking really clean other than that seam break there up top. Now when it comes to something like a layer shift in your print you could try to repair this by separating the two parts continuing the print or reprinting the top part and then joining the files together again. However, I don't want to monkey around with that, especially since it has this really nice texture detail to it and it would be really hard for me to sand and smooth out properly. So I just went off and reprinted everything over again, but not once, but a second time as well with two different variations of the same print. Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. We have an awesome print compare that we're now able to do between these two Neptune 4 printers and the exact same file. However, there's one slight twist. I did no center supports on one of them and that took 25 hours and we have center supports on the back side of that helmet and that took 32 hours. So a nice six hour time saving, but we also ended up saving on some filament usage as well. And these Neptune 4 printers print stupidly fast at the default print speed of 250 millimeters per second. And I printed these at 0.2 layer height with ironing enabled so I could get a nice smooth top surface finish as best I could on these helmets. And if I compare that to an estimate for the Neptune 3 Pro out of Prusa Slicer, that comes to a whopping 57 hours for the exact same file and the same type of supports that were gonna be printed using the same settings, obviously minus the print speed differences for those files. Now here's a big bummer with this is that I ended up still getting that seam split there on almost the exact same spot on this helmet. So it's leading me to believe that there's either an issue with the way that I sliced this file because I reprinted the exact same file twice in a row, or I need to adjust the belt on this printer or one of the rollers there to help prevent that from occurring again. We should have 
There we go. The perfect version of this cowl that we can get these supports removed from and move on to the next stage of getting this thing assembled and painted. And because I'm a complete maniac and wanted to see what the full version of this would look like fully printed on a larger printer, I went off and printed this cowl here in one piece on the Neptune 3 Max with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 layer height with again, ironing enabled. That took 33 hours to print. Look how crazy cool this is coming off of the Neptune 3 Max printing at that stupidly fast speed thanks to the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. It obviously isn't gonna look as crisp and clean as what we got off of the 0.4 nozzle. However, it still looks really dang good and I'm so impressed with the quality of this at how fast that printed there with that 0.6 nozzle. And let's get the supports removed from these prints. Now here you can see on the back side of the helmet where all the supports failed, it still managed to retain a good bit of the support area there on that upper connection area. But I should be able to just pull that straight out. Also, I don't necessarily think I've really needed supports in this center section here. Could have just gone without that. And here's the inside looking so much clean. You can also use a heat gun to help try and clean up any of the stray little strands. A deburring tool can also be really useful in cleaning up the edges or seams of your print. I then went over to my local Harbor Freight and picked up some magnets, which just so happened to fit perfectly inside of the openings that had been preset inside the mask to allow me to clasp the front and back of the mask together. The magnets also sat a little too shallow inside of the helmet, so I went off and 3D printed these little inserts that I'm able to super glue in place before installing the magnets. Now I still haven't found a mess free way to install these magnets without getting an absolute ton of super glue on my fingertips. Yeah, even when I'm using an Allen wrench like this to help push things into place, it still ends up all over my fingers. If you have any tips or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. All right, so I have both halves of the helmet magnets installed and glued in place, including those little spacers that I went off and printed. Let's see if this fits. Of course, it's too, it's too wide on one side, so I've got to mush it into place, but it does snap into place. So I now need to look into taking a bit of the material off on the inside using my Dremel to shave away some of the inside because again, it's gonna be just, oh my goodness, those magnets are in there nice and tight. I can get it on, it's just really snug around my ears. And one thing that we can try to do is use a heat gun to help stretch the helmet out a little bit by warming up the inside and exterior of the helmet ever so slightly. You don't wanna do this too much because you don't wanna melt anything, but you should be able to warm it up here by continuously moving around the heat gun on the inside of the helmet there to slowly but surely start to stretch this out ever so slightly. So after using the heat gun to heat this up and giving it a bit of stretch, let's test it out. The good news is it's no longer scraping my ears here and the back plate more easily snaps into place. I can already tell here that I'm still gonna have to do a little bit of Dremel sanding to smooth out the edges of the back plate. And in the next video, I'm not only gonna be painting these, but I'm also gonna be working on cleaning up the seam lines here where the ear connects to the front part of the mask, really trying to mimic the pattern there as best I can to make this look as clean as possible. And obviously, if you're interested in printing one of these Wolverine masks for yourself, I'll have links to Yosh Studios files down below. Also, I'll have links to my Patreon, which I wanna say a big, huge thank you to uh, all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I have my 3D printer settings that I used for this included in my Patreon. And as usual, if you have any tips or suggestions on how I could go about cleaning up these seams, feel free to comment down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching y'all, and I'll see you next time.